So in this video we are working backwards. Um, the, this topic up until now we've done a lot of graph sketching. Here is the equation, draw the graph. Um, and now we're going to work in reverse. Here is the graph, what, it's, what is its equation. Now I've mentioned before that obviously a um, trig function could be described using a sine graph, a sine equation or a cos equation. And so therefore um, you'll generally be given the form of the equation that you want to find um, so as to indicate whether we're after a sine function or a cosine function um, and whether it's to be reflected and have a translation or whether it's um, not to be reflected and therefore not need a translation or whatever it might be. So you'll get the, the general form um, and that isn't to say that this is the only possible equation that fits this line. So I want to be clear about that. It would be perfectly possible for a question to ask you to find a sine function and a cosine function um, that both fit the graph. Um, that would be feasible. Um, so let's have a look at the examples. Let's work through these. So here we've got a graph. We're told that it has a rule of the form y equals a times cos of nt plus c. So dilation from the x-axis, hence amplitude change potentially. Dilation from the y-axis, hence period change potentially. There could be reflections depending on whether a or n are negative. Um, and then it's been translated up by c. Okay, so if it's a cosine um, function, then, so what we want to be able to sort of see here is, I think probably the up C is one of the early things we're going to be able to work out. Um, in fact, most of these things are relatively straightforward. So what I'm seeing here is that this line here now is the middle of the graph, okay? Um, and that it then oscillates um, two above that and two below that, okay? So we clearly see the amplitude is two. Um, we can also clearly see that the graph has gone up by one, so C is going to be one. Um, we can also see that the period, in this case, is 8, and so we can use that to work out what n must be. Now, it's a cosine function, and so I'm looking for where am I seeing the cosine shape. Now, you might think about, um, let me just use a highlighter for a second, you might sort of think, oh right, here's the start of the cosine, but the fact that this equation doesn't have a translation to the right, that can't be what's going on here. So actually what we're looking at is here is the start of the cosine function and the graph hasn't been translated at all, instead it's been reflected in the x-axis. So the a value is negative, okay? So what we've got here is we've got um, reflection in the x-axis. We've also got an amplitude of two, which together tell us that a must be negative two, okay? We can see that we have a period of eight, which means that two pi on n must equal eight. Two pi equals eight n, and so n equals two pi on eight, and so therefore n is pi on four, okay? And we can also see that um, the graph has been translated up one. So we've also got translation up one, which means that C is one. And so there are values of A, N and C. So again, be clear about what the question's asking you for. If it asks you to give the equation, make sure you put those back into the rule and state the final equation. If it asks you to find the values of A, N and C, be very clear about what the values of A, N and C are, which is what we've done here. Okay, let's have a look at number two. A function has a rule of the form y equals a times sine of nx plus b, where a, n, and b are all positive real numbers, and b is between pi on 2 and pi, inclusive. Find the values of a, n, and b if the function has range negative 2, 2, if the period is 12, and if y equals root 3 when x equals 1. Okay, so let's have a think about this. So the range... Uh, well, let's first of all think about the general form. So we've got A, which could mean reflection of the sine graph and or dilation from the x-axis of the sine graph, so possibly amplitude change. We have N, which means um, period change or possibly reflection in the y-axis. Um, so um, dilation from the y-axis by a factor of 1 on N. And we've got plus B, which means there's a translation left or right. Now, it's not 
um, it's not left or right by B, or given that B is positive, it's not left by B, it's actually left by um, B over N, again because it's not quite written properly, but actually that's not really going to matter given the information we've got here. So let's have a look at what we've got. The fact that the range is negative 2 to 2 tells us that our graph hasn't been translated up or down, which we already knew from the general form because the average value is still 0, but it also tells us that the amplitude is equal to, sorry, the amplitude is equal to 2. So I'm going to take that to tell me that A must be 2 in this instance. I'm going to have a look at this because it's actually, um, oh well actually we know A has to be 2, positive 2, because it tells us that A is a positive real number. Okay. Um, then we've got period is 12, that's going to allow us to work out N. So period equals 12, that means that uh, it's a sine curve, so 2 pi over N equals 12, and so 2 pi equals 12 n and so n equals 2 pi on 12 which means that n is pi on 6 and then the last thing is that we have a point essentially which we're going to be able to use to find b so let's work out what we know about our equation for now so our equation is y equals 2 times sine of pi on 6 x plus b okay and we we have a point y equals root 3 when x equals 1 okay so we know when x equals 1 y equals root 3 we put that into our equation root 3 equals 2 sine pi on 6 plus b uh, and so that means we have a little equation to solve so sine of pi on 6 plus b equals root 3 over 2 um, sine is positive and it's um, the exact value is root 3 over 2 so Thinking about our special triangle, if sine is root 3 on 2, we must be talking about pi on 3. Sine is positive, so we're looking at pi on 3 in the first and second quadrants. Okay, So that's the location of our solutions. Now we're only actually interested in a particular solution here. So we want where b is between pi on 2 and pi. Okay, So if we want... So remembering the solutions that come out of the unit circle are going to be equal to pi on 6 plus b and then we'll subtract pi on 6 from them. Now we want these solutions, the final solutions for b, to be between pi on 2 and pi, which means that b plus pi on 6 has to be between pi on 2 plus pi on 6, uh, which is, uh, what is that, 2 pi on 3? Pi on 2 is, no sorry, uh, 4 pi on 6, yeah, 2 pi on 3. So, uh, sorry, in my head there I was doing pi on 2 is the same as 3 pi on 6. So if we're adding on another pi on 6, that's 4 pi on 6, which is 2 pi on 3. Now in this instance you can probably avoid this really literal um, uh, change of the domain and instead just find a number of solutions and then work out which ones give you your final answers but you can think it through and find the precise one that you want from the outset um, so then pi plus pi on 6 is 7 pi on 6 okay so that actually means that one of our solutions is 2 pi on 3 so that's actually the first solution pi on 3 is not it's not in that domain okay so 2 pi on 3 is the first solution if you want to just give yourself the next one as well that would be 2 pi plus pi on 3 um, which is 6 pi on 3, so 7 pi on 3, but that's outside of that domain. So 2 pi on 3 is the one we want. And then we're subtracting pi on 6 to get our final solution. So that is um, subtracting 2 pi on 3. And so we get actually that B is 0. Oh, sorry, I'm not thinking there, am I? So... Um, that is 2 pi on 3 take away pi on 6. Now 2 pi on 3 is 4 pi on 6. Take away 1 pi on 6 leaves me with 3 pi on 6, which is pi on 2. So given that um, b has to be between pi on 2 and pi, that's going to be the solution that we need. Obviously infinitely many solutions to the equation, but that's what we need. So we've got, oops, sorry, so we have got uh, b equals pi on 2. Again, let's be clear about what the question asked for. A function, find the values of a, n, and b. So we've got a, we've got n, and we've got b. Great, so we've answered the question. 
Okay, sorry, so example three. A function with um, rule of the form y equals tan of nt plus c has asymptotes at those locations and passes through the point zero four. Find the values of n and c. Okay, so n is um, the period change, dilation from the y-axis by one on n, and c is a translation up. So we're going to be able to use the asymptotes to tell us about the period. Okay, so if we have a graph, uh, let's just, let me just give myself a rough sketch here. So let's say that's 1.3, 2 3.3, 3.3, which is pi, pi on 3, 4, 5 pi on 3, etc. And what we're seeing here is that there is an asymptote at pi on 3, an asymptote at pi, an asymptote at 5 pi on 3, etc. So our period is going to be the distance between the asymptotes, which is clearly 2 pi on 3. Okay, So we can tell from this information um, the asymptotes, sorry, totes, um, tell us that the period is the difference between the asymptotes. So let's say pi minus pi on 3, so therefore 2 pi on 3. Now, period of a tan graph is pi on n, and we know that that's equal to 2 pi on 3. So that means that uh, 3 pi equals 2 n pi, or 3 equals 2 n, and therefore n is 3 over 2. So we've found the value of n, and then we want to find the value of c, so we've got a point. So let's put our n value into our equation. So this means that our equation is y equals tan of 3 over 2, um, is it t in this question? Yep, t, and plus c. And we're going to use the fact that it goes through the point zero 4 to work out um, to work out the value of c. Now, actually, if you think a bit about this, this is going to tell us straight away that c equals four because we've got a tan graph which just has a um, uh, just has a period change, um, which means that the without the shift up or down it would go through 0, 0. So the fact that it's gone up by C and it now goes through 0, 4 means that C is going to be 4. But we could also substitute um, the point in, tan of 0 plus C, tan of 0 is 0, and so therefore C equals 4. So that's pretty straightforward as well. Okay, some questions for you to do from 6i and a couple from 6j as well, which are about tan graphs.